Hey everyone, it's MK. Welcome back to MK Quilts and this week's tip of the week. So this week we're talking a little bit about pantos, edge to edge designs, and this phenomenon that some of us experience where we get a little bit of drift in our pantograph as we advance through the quilt. Now, if you've not experienced that, count yourself lucky uh, because most of the time when I'm out teaching and talking with people, I, I find out that they are experiencing this. And basically what is happening is as you are repositioning through the quilt and advancing and repositioning and advancing and repositioning, your panto starts to drift in a little bit on the edges. I find for myself that this does happen, and for me, it drifts a little bit from the left. Okay, so on the left-hand side, where I start out with my position is not necessarily where I end up with my position. And what I mean by that is I'm a little further away from the quilt when I start. I personally stitch out into the batting when I do edge to edge. So I start in the batting a little bit further away from the quilt on the left-hand side, and by the time I get to the bottom, it's drifted in a little bit closer to the edge of the quilt. Now, I feel that there's not one specific reason why this happens. I kind of feel like it's the nature of the beast. We all advance a little bit differently. We all load a little bit differently. We all use our side clamps a little bit differently. We use different battings. I think there's a whole lot of reasons why it happens, but the thing about it is you want to try to have your panto going as straight as you can down the edge of your quilt so that you have enough pattern left by the time you get to the bottom. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that I learned along the way. I must admit that is this is not my original tip. I think I saw it, I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago even, over on one of the other social media boards. And it basically has to do with your area box, leaving that area box open while you're quilting through the quilt, and then every couple of advances, taking your pattern and realigning it to the area box. Okay, I'm gonna switch the camera around. I've got a quilt loaded over here on McFinity. I'm just about to advance, so let me talk you through what I have on the frame, what I have on the screen, then I'm gonna advance, and I'm gonna show you this little alignment trick that you can try in your studio. All right, so the first thing is, on my screen, I have my original area box that was created, and I have the quilt loaded, and I'm just now ready. I've completed my first set of passes. Now, I do wanna mention that some of us set up our pantos a little bit differently, and it's it doesn't really necessarily matter how you set them up, but most of us are gonna have that area box when we first start, right? Because we've had to tell Pro Stitcher what is the dimension of our quilt and then get that pantograph in that area to start stitching, okay? I do that a little bit differently. Of course, that's all explained in my pantos video. But right now, I am ready to advance. And this little pin right here, that is my, my start point for the next set of passes. That's how I do it. I reposition on start point. So I'm going to go ahead and advance this quilt. And I'm going to do that off camera because I only have one set of hands here today. So I'm going to advance the quilt. I'm going to go ahead and get everything basted back down and clamped. And then I will show you this little realignment trick by leaving the area box open. Okay, here we are. I have advanced. I have positioned my pattern right on top of the pin, right, that I showed you before. The pin went with it as I advanced so that I know right where to reposition. Put my machine on top of that pin, and then I went ahead and did modify reposition on start point. Okay, that's how I do it. Now, every once in a while, what I am recommending that you do is even though you have advanced, in my case, I have positioned to the start point, every once in a while, maybe every other advance, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a modify align because you still have your area box open. And then what you're gonna do is align left. Now, I don't know if you could see that on the screen. It barely moved, 
but it did move a little bit, okay? So if you do that alignment trick every couple of advances, you're gonna keep that pattern going straighter down the edge of your quilt. Now there's other ways that you can accomplish this. You could accomplish that by doing the nudge function, which would be under modify reposition, and use your nudge digit, and just nudge it a little bit every couple of advances. If you did that, you wouldn't necessarily need the area box, but it's just one of those, you know, it's another option. I know that some of you may just use the side of your quilt. You may not stitch out into the batting. Maybe you are just aligning your patterns to the absolute edge of the quilt. And as you go down, you're keeping that pattern aligned to the edge of the quilt. That's another way of doing it. One of the things to keep in mind, if you're going to do some nudging or some aligning, is that you want to have chosen a pattern that has a really nice nest to it. In other words, it's not going to matter if you nudge it a little bit. Now, not all patterns are like that. Uh, and why don't I go ahead and take you guys into simulation and show you this a little bit where I can actually have my hands available and I'll use this actual pattern that I'm using. I'm just going to go ahead and save my workspace and open it up over there so that you can see a little closer and then I'll talk to you about the patterns that it works on and the patterns that it doesn't. All right, everybody, here we are in simulation. A little easier for me to show you this way. All right, what you have to do is a little bit of imagining as I step you through this, right? You have to imagine that you're at the quilt and I'm running through these steps that I showed you over there at my machine. So what you're looking at here is my pantograph just as it was over at the machine. So what I want you to pretend is that these first few passes have been stitched out. Okay, now just a little side note. If I turn my area box off and I turn turn my bounds box off, you're going to see that my pantos are connected. And I do that so I can stitch in both directions, okay? You don't have to do that for these steps, but I just wanted you to be aware that mine is set up in that manner. Okay, turn the area box back on, turn the bounds box back on. All right, let's let this pattern just stitch out a little bit so that we can kind of imagine that those first few rows would have been stitched out and I'm just going to let my simulator run to the end of the pass. All right, there we go. In my world, I would just trim my threads right there. And then I would hit resume, let the machine go down, needle up, needle down, needle up rather. And then I'm going to go ahead and clip my threads right there. Okay, so here's where you have to imagine again that you're advancing. Okay, so pretend advance, 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 advance. Okay, so you guys get that. Okay, when I come back, I'm going to bring my machine into position, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it right over the pin. Okay, so now I, I didn't have a pin, obviously, in simulation, and I'm going to even sneak in a little bit just so that we can show this realignment trick. Okay, so brought my machine back into position over top of the pin. I'm going to make sure my start circle's back to row number one, so I'm going to jump it backwards, and then I'm going to reposition on start point. Okay, if I went through that a little bit fast and you're not really understanding, just rent my best practices for pantos, and all of that is explained in there. Okay, so now we've repositioned to the start point, but we may have experienced a little bit of drift on this advance. So all I'm suggesting for you to do is leave that area box open, go immediately to align, and just align it to the left. Okay, so do you see how that, it did shift a little bit? It was a very minute amount but it did shift a little bit by aligning it to the left onto the area box. Now, if you don't want the area box to stay open the whole time that you're quilting, you can just turn it off. Now, it's still there. It's just the viewing of it has been turned off. So that's personal preference. You can leave it on or you can just turn it off, but you want to leave it created so that you can use it for this alignment trick to the left. All right, the next thing I want to show you, let's just go ahead and do a clear all. I want to show you um, some patterns that you might want to think about if you're doing this type of a technique. So this pattern right here, this is the one that I was using, and this one is a really nice pattern. It's pretty much straight across the top. It's pretty much straight across the bottom, which means that if you want to adjust it a little bit every other advance, it's not going to matter. Okay, Your eye is never going to see that you shifted one row to the 
the next. Okay, so that's a really easy one to do. Let's just go ahead and close that one. On this one, this is called Tickle. I've had this in my collection a long time. You can go ahead and get that on Urban Elements if you want. But on this one, let's just go ahead and repeat it a couple of times side to side. And let's just repeat it once vertically. Let's go ahead and close up our gap distance. And, oops, that was a little bit too much. Okay, so we'll fine tune it a little bit. So once you take care of that and you're using this panto, you can see that it does overlap, right? It's got that nesting, that nesting attribute to it. But still, you've got a little bit of wiggle room, right? It doesn't have to specifically match up one row to the next. If you nudge it just a small amount, once again, your eye is not really going to see that you did that little alignment trick. Okay, so that, that would be a good one to use that, use that on. Okay, so let's just close that one. And let's talk about this one. So now this guy, this might not be a good one to use and then go ahead and shift it every couple of advances. Because when we repeat this one, make sure we're point to point, this one is actually an offset pantograph, right? So we would want to go ahead into wrapping and get this all set up before we work with this panto at our quilt. But the point of this is that these points, they kind of need to match up as you're advancing, right? These points right there, right there, and right there. And if you start nudging a pattern like this every couple of advances, well, then your points may or may not line up. Okay, so it's just something to think about what pattern that you're using if you're going to plan on nudging it a little bit. Now, a pattern like this one, you might have to nudge it a little bit anyways to get those points to line up, right? Because after you advance and you clamp it back down, they might or might not be lining up. So just just keep in mind what pattern you're using and if you've got a little play in it or not. If I was using this pattern, I would probably just allow myself a little bit more room out on the edges. Like I said, I stitch out into the batting. So I might just allow myself a little bit of extra space out into the batting so that I could take care of nudging this to get my points lined up. Okay? So you guys, the basic, the basic tip for this week is that, yes, you may experience this drift phenomenon. You may not, and that's a good thing. But if you do experience the drift, you can go ahead and use either the nudge or the align to the left on area box and keep yourself a little bit straighter with the pantograph from pass to pass and advance to advance as you work your way through the quilt. All right, that's all I got for you today. Hope it was helpful. And until next time, everybody, it's MK. Bye-bye.